Welcome to e Know How. In this video, we'll be looking at a CMOS pass gate and how it is constructed and uh, how to size it. So a pass gate is actually a switch. So you have two voltages, V in and V out. And pass gate is nothing but a switch between them. And it is supposed to effectively pass whatever voltage applied at the V in to V out. So now let's try constructing a pass gate with an NMOS transistor. So let's take an NMOS device. This is uh, say V in and then this is V out and V connect an R out resistance and this is a pretty high resistance and the bulk is substrate is connected to ground this is VG and these drain and source are interchangeable so we have VN and the highest voltage for an NMOS it's better to connect the gate to the highest voltage so the highest voltage available in digital uh, circuits is VDD so let's connect the gate to VDD and see how it works. So this is V out here. Now as you as V in it starts to increase from 0 to VDD here. When V in is at ground the VGS VGS N is VDD is the V gate minus ground at the source is VDD. So you have a very high uh, VGS and so it's the NMOS is on. And now when you have say the input is at VDD you will see if you calculate the VGS N it would be VDD at the at the gate minus VDD is actually zero. So but really uh, the VGS is not zero in this case because what happens is the V out will be less than VDD so it's barely on from this side. This becomes the source now, the other side. Okay let's try to plot what happens uh, on wh what is the V out with respect to V in. So we try to plot V out and V in is the x-axis so and V out is the Y axis so as V in starts to increase and say this is VDD here and V in is VDD here so so as V in starts to increase from go from 0 towards VDD Initially, the V out will follow VDD, and once the V out, now let's look at V out. Once this the voltage here at V out is VDD minus VTN, it does not increase further. The reason is, even if VN is increasing, it's off from this side. But for this to be barely on, so you can it can only pass uh, the voltage at the output can only go as high as VDD minus VTN after that after which it is going to clamp. So this would go up to VDD minus VTN and the clamp there. So this is how the NMOS switch will work. Now if we try to construct a switch with a PMOS device. So a PMOS device here, VN, and then this substrate is connected to VDD here. It's the N well, and uh, the V we have the R out, and the output is at V out. Now in this case, in this kind of connection, so and then uh, we want to connect the gate of the PMOS to the lowest voltage available so we connect VG to ground zero 
So now when Vn is 0, when Vn is 0 and Vg is also 0, so if you look at the Vsg, so Vsg of the PMOS is 0, so it's off. So once Vn is either Vtp or greater than modules of Vtp here, the absolute of Vtp, so which is the threshold voltage of the PMOS, then Vsg is Vsgp will be Vtp. So it starts to turn on at that point and then it, it is on, it will be strongly on when Vn is equal to Vdd. When Vn is Vdd, it will pass the full voltage to the output. So this would look more like if you plot again the Vn the V out versus V in for the PMOS switch. So this VDD, VDD here. So initially it doesn't pass any voltage till it gets to say VTP where it turns on and after that you will have it will follow V in. The V out will follow V in. So Initially, you won't get any voltage at the lower voltages. So, the NMOS is not good at passing higher voltages. PMOS is not good at passing lower voltages. So now, what we do is, for a pass gate, we usually construct a pass gate using both PMOS and NMOS. So we have a PMOS device, and we have an NMOS connected in parallel to the PMOS device. So this is V in and V out and you still have the R out resistance here. And now when we connect this to an enable say you have an enable that enables the or turns on the PMOS we actually invert it and connect it to the gate of the PMOS. So what happens is when enable is high or VDD, the enable bar, this is enable bar, and this is enable, the enable bar would be at ground, so it will turn on the PMOS. So you have VDD on the gate of the NMOS and zero on the gate of the PMOS. So both of them are on. And the bulks are connected in the usual way. The PMOS N well is connected to VDD, and the NMOS substrate is connected to ground. So, if you look at this switch, this switch is good at passing almost all voltages. Say, if you really plot uh, V, if you try to plot V out versus V in it can almost be a straight line here. So this is, it might be, so this is V in here and V out. But it's really not good somewhere in the center where both the devices exhibit large on resistance. Now, now we have to talk about this in terms of on resistance of this. On resistance is the resistance of this CMOS switch between V in and V out. And so this is R out. And then there's a current flowing, say, I here. So now we look at the on resistance of the switch. It can be written as, you know, uh, V in minus any drop, which is usually you don't want any drop. so you want V in to be V out, but if there is any drop divided by the current flowing, current flowing is um, divided by V out and or R out. So this is R on. So which would be, 
So this is basically this, the denominator is I, the current flowing. So that would be R out, V in minus V out over V out. So if we know, if we know the R out resistance and then we know the V in and V out values, we can measure the on resistance of the CMOS switch. But usually what happens is if you plot it with respect to V in, the on resistance is a function of V in and say R out is, uh, a, is a function of V in. So now if you try to plot this, say V in here from 0 to VDD, somewhere here is VDD over 2. So if you look at the on resistance R on, usually you will get a plot like this where it's low at lower voltages and in between peaks and falls back again at the higher voltages. This peaks because at this point, at this, uh, these voltages here, neither the PMOS or the NMOS is strongly on and both exhibit resistance. So that's why there is uh, usually peaks at the mid VCC range. And now how do you size this? We size this similar to an inverter where, because you know the P channel device is, has a lower, uh, the holes have lower mobility. So WP should be greater than WN of the of the CMOS pass gate. So so that well once we we adjust this for the CMOS pass gate, we adjust that so that if you look at the the R on here at the lower voltages should be approximately equal to the R on at the higher voltages. To make these two equal we need to size the WP and WN accordingly. But uh, this will always be WP will be greater than WN. That's how we size for the CMOS switch.